do you know? I've been coming through that door for years now. Why this should happen to me, I don't know. Just looked up, I suppose. Don't ask me why. What a mess. Half a finger gone in the bat of an eyelid. Never imagined somehow that this could happen to me. But it has. Why do accidents happen? Because they're caused caused by overconfidence in our abilities and our surroundings, and more often than not, caused by downright carelessness. Let's take another look at Fred's accident. A little overconfidence in running where to do so was an obvious danger. A little carelessness by someone else, and... Mind you, not all cuts are as dramatic as this. But one thing is certain. They always happen when and often where you least expect them. For instance, Aluminium foil looks harmless enough, but after washing, when the hands are soft, that edge appears suddenly sharper. Of course, people who work with knives and other sharp implements must take extra care. Even with a skilled worker, one moment of carelessness can be fatal. No, it's not going to happen this time, but how well it might. You simply can't afford to be careless with a knife like this. So handle it with respect. Now, this operator has the right idea. In case of a slip, she works carefully with the blade moving away from her. She knows that it's only too easy to get a sliced finger. Careful, you'd say? Yes, but not careful enough. In less time than it takes to turn the head, it's already too late. No, no, no. Don't wrap it up in that. And don't leave it. Go straight away to the medical department for first aid treatment. That's what it's there for. Now, this accident was caused by the careless resting of a knife with its cutting edge uppermost. When putting down a knife, place it flat. And when you've finished with it, put it away safely where it belongs. Cuts are very easily infected if left untreated. And the result of this sort of negligence can be seen here. This was caused by only a scratch from a meat hook. Remember, however small the cut, report to the medical department immediately for first aid treatment. And that goes too for splinters and irritations of the eye. Wherever necessary, such as with tool grinding or with this sort of work, eye protection is always available. Use it and don't do as this man has done. Should you get something in your eye, don't try and deal with it yourself. You may cause more damage. As with cuts and splinters, seek first aid immediately. Maureen was not the type of girl you could call careless or silly. Far from it. She was considered reliable and efficient in her job, and like most girls, took trouble with her general appearance. She was always correctly and neatly dressed, except for her shoes. Up to the time of her accident, she never saw much point in wearing decent shoes on the factory floor. And if they were old shoes, why bother about whether the heels were worn down, or even about what the soles and heels were made of? Oh dear, nearly a minute late. Well, here's one who's not going to be on the end of the lunch queue. to happen sooner or later. An ignored warning, a bit of a hurry, composition soles and worn down heels all added up finally to a gashed head. Maureen thought footwear unimportant. How wrong she was. While working, see that you wear comfortable shoes with well-repaired flat or low heels. And what is most important, to reduce the risk of slipping on washed tiled floors, always have your repairs made in leather. The wearing of recommended shoes doesn't mean, of course, that you can ignore warnings. 
where frequent hosing down is necessary, as seen here in the ice cream factory, the danger of a wet floor must be recognized. Use your common sense and walk carefully. And stepping back into Cadby Hall, accidental deposits of fat and flour can make floors even more slippery. If you are responsible for seeing that floors are kept clean, then do so properly, making sure they're left as dry as possible. Many falls are caused by obstruction. Always see that gangways are kept clear. Even if the obstructing object is none of your business, accident prevention certainly is. Move it. Electric lighting is there for a purpose. If it doesn't work as it should, then conditions become confusing, dark and dangerous. We can see what could happen here. A slip in this oil might have very nasty results. Be alive to this sort of situation and deal with it immediately. The next man's eyes may not be so good. Bad illumination increases the risk of accident, so make a point of reporting lighting faults without delay. Stairs are an obvious danger, and most people have the sense not to run up and down them, especially in a food factory where they're washed frequently. Even though you may be a careful walker, always use the handrail as a guard against the unexpected. Well, if it hadn't been for the handrail, it might have meant a broken neck. Instead, it's just another ladder. Injuries to the body caused by moving or falling objects can be extremely serious, and in many cases, fatal. on a high scaffolding or only on the top of a stepladder. Never leave objects, particularly tools, where they can fall on people. Secure them by putting them in a safe place. The moving of loads and the handling of vehicles requires extreme care. And that's not what we're going to see here. Insecure load, forwards down a ramp, obscured vision, and somebody else gets the benefit. That's it, you have a go. And while you're about it, tell him to have another look at the company rules for forklift truck drivers. Bad stacking anywhere is both lazy and dangerous. Watch out. To stack them properly doesn't require much more effort. It may not be quite so easy as this, but to stack them neatly is to stack them safely. Hands and feet run a greater risk of being injured. These cages are much heavier than they look. Protect your hands by using the safety handles. Protected hands, protected feet, or so they ought to be. Under these conditions, one slip can mean smashed toes. So why risk it? If you're in any way exposed to foot injury, then do see about protective footwear from your departmental supervision. Let's just see how effective this type of footwear is. This shoe has a spring steel reinforced toe cap. As a test, a 10 pound weight will be dropped onto it from a height of five feet. Not even a dent. Now let's see what happens to an ordinary shoe. machinery in which Pat lost his finger. It really is amazing that anyone would risk maiming for life by plunging a hand into machinery like this. But owing to overconfidence in the handling of their machines and blinded by the stupid assumption that it couldn't happen to me, the fact remains that some operators do. On this machine, for example, against all the rules, the operator removed the fixed guard to get at the mechanism. 
he lost part of his finger, like this. Not content with risking their own skin, a few operators go still further. By fiddling the special cutout devices designed to stop certain machines automatically when the guard is lifted, they render the machinery unsafe for everyone. On this depositor, one operator went so far as to bridge the cutout by introducing a magnetic device of his own. This meant that the guard could be slid back and the sides cleared manually with the machinery still in motion. It meant, too, that fingers could be nipped off by this hidden shutter at the bottom. Some may think this sort of interference clever. It's not clever, it's criminal. And it's the main reason why Pat lost his finger. Having become thoroughly familiar with the workings of his machine, he sometimes thought that the safety devices were just a little unnecessary where an experienced fellow like himself was concerned. Another jammer. And getting just a bit tired of this. Missed the guard and the machine stopped. What a waste of time. Could get my hand in and out of here easy. I'm a jolly good mind to fix this guard. Why not? Nobody will know. Did you hear about Pat? Lost a finger in his machine this morning. Go on. How did that happen? Well, he fiddled the guard or something, and just as he had his hand in the work, along comes the cleaner and thumps him in the back with his mop handle. Zoop! Clean as a whistle. And he's blaming the cleaner, I suppose. He knows it was his own fault, all right. But from the things he called the cleaner, you'd think the poor chap had wanted to cause the accident. I ask you. Who'd want to cause an accident? Come on, let's eat. Stop. Look. Accidents can happen to you. See, they don't happen to you. Accident prevention is your business. 